Hello and welcome to this month's SNOMED CT research webinar. I'm Susie Roy, the Customer Relations Manager for the Americas and Research Engagement Lead at SNOMED International, and of course, the host of the SNOMED CT research webinars. As always, I have just a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Um, everyone is currently muted, um, but if you have any questions as we go along, please enter your questions into the Q&A box. And when we get to the end of the presentation and the Q&A portion, um, we'll be sure to read your questions out first. Um, this webinar is being recorded and both the video and the slides will be made available later this week. Our SNOMED CT web series have become wildly popular monthly events. I like to say that it was you, our research web series that really kickstarted this success. In addition to our research series, we now also have a clinical and implementation web series where the focus is on clinical implementations of SNOMED CT. These are always free of charge. You just need to register because of the platform that we use for these events. You can visit snomed.org slash web series to see the upcoming presentations for each of these tracks, as well as uh, view any of the recordings or download any of the slides. With regards to the research web series, you can either watch that SNOMED web series webpage or you can register for our research reference group. And really this is just where I post information about upcoming research related news. Uh, in order to join, you just have to email me sro at snomed.org and I'll get you on that list. And finally, one last little bit of information before I hand this off to our presenter. Um, looking at the attendees list, um, I know a large number of you were actually able to register and attend the SNOMED CT Expo that was held in October. Um, despite not being able to see our SNOMED CT community uh, in person, it was actually an awesome event with our loud, largest crowd ever from over 60 nations. So really today, I just wanted to, oops, sorry, I just wanted to remind you that you're actually able to still access all of the presentations, tutorials, and e-posters until January 2021. Uh, in order to view any of the materials, you just go to snomedexpo.org. And again, you have until January to view any of that. So please do go ahead and uh, check that out. Okay. I am absolutely honored to introduce today's presenter. Dr. Gong Wei Chung is currently a distinguished professor in the Institute of Health Management at Southern Medical University in China. Dr. Gong was previously the executive director at the National Rare Diseases Registry System of China and uh, has been a pioneer in rare disease research and patient advocacy in China. His research focuses on uh, it covers medical terminology and ontology, precision medical informatics, rare disease and orphan drugs development, and health technology assessments. He is active with international academic societies and holds the positions of Diagnostic Science Committee member of IRD IRC, member at large of the Global Health Informatics Work Group of AMIA, the Medical Informatics Consultant of the National Children's Care Center, Fudan University Children's Hospital, and a member of the Executive Committee of the Chinese Association of Bioinformatics. And of course, Dr. Gong is a member of our SNOMED International Management Board. Today, Dr. Gong will be presenting Bridging the R RWD Databases Across the Countries to Empower Studies on COVID-19. And with that, Dr. Gong, I will hand the screen over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Susie. Uh, let me shift it to you. Oops, I'm sorry. It's okay. One minute. Uh, so, could you see my slides? Uh, yes. Okay. Perfect. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Susie, for organizing this, uh, this and thank you uh, for uh, Snowman International for inviting me. Yes, as Susie has introduced, I've been working uh, 
as the management board director for Snowman International for the past three years. So uh, we are really proud of our organization and of our product, which is actually uh, uh, very actively uh, uh, influencing the uh, informatics innovation for this pandemic uh, management around the world during the past one year. So uh, I, uh, currently, I also work, worked in the House Management Institute of Southern Medical University in, in China, Guangzhou, as a professor in, um, in, uh, in medical informatics. So today, I'd like to uh, start from what we did at the beginning, and then introduce you, uh, introduce to our audience uh, what we did on the front line uh, during the uh, battle with the disease. And after we returned from uh, Hubei, uh, we started to do some studies on the real world data. So now making some progress. So this is the, uh, this is the outline of my uh, slides. So uh, if you have any question, uh, please write it down and we can have some discussion after these slides. So um, SNOMED has been very rapidly and professionally responding uh, during the whole pandemic. In the very early uh, phase of the disease, I still remember uh, we just had our uh, Lunar New Year and I started to check with uh, Snowman International Confluence and I saw there are new concepts uh, ID and also the definition of the new concepts released in our international edition. So this is a very uh, rapid and professional uh, respond and responsive uh, action uh, uh, to uh, to the uh, disease. And it's because we have a professional team to support this. So that's why we can, uh, Snowman, Snowman International can do this. And after that, uh, Snowman started to work with other standards organizations to try to build up the whole standardization uh, system for the disease and also the relevant, uh, the related tests and also vaccination and other uh, treatments. And also uh, we released uh, Snowman CT uh, content uh, in our uh, global patient set, which is a, uh, uh, a, a subset of Snowman CT that's, uh, used, that can be used uh, in many countries without uh, considering the, the uh, uh, international license issue. So uh, this is really um, illustrating uh, our uh, um, commitment and our effort in uh, leveraging the power of uh, terminology to uh, to uh, to battle the to control the disease, so um, uh, also uh, in a very early phase of the uh, whole pandemic, it's in the on the February the fourth, after we learned that uh, Snowman CT has released the, uh, the first edition of uh, the uh, novel coronavirus pneumonia, uh, I I started to do some re uh, work in China, so. I did a Delphi study on the standard translation and the synonyms of the disease and also other terms. So uh, we sent out the questionnaire and got uh, about half of them back. And we collect, collected on average 10 synonyms for each concept. And on the right, you can see the background of the experts. There are uh, yeah, uh, 50, 57 back, uh, experts uh, responded. So um, the most important work uh, uh, of this is the first that we collected many synonyms and these synonyms were used in the following um, uh, uh, internet uh, IT, IT uh, uh, systems work and also the data analytics. And also we raised the awareness in a standard community that we need to consider in Chinese about the interoperability and statistics and also the sharing. Uh, uh, that the standards uh, that we might need for for the uh, for the for the control of the disease. So um, these are the results of the Delphi study, and you can see on average ten synonyms for each concept. And most of the concept now changed because uh, now we have COVID nineteen. At that time, it's NCP, but still, you know, uh, this is a very rapid uh, response led by uh, Snowman CT. And then we did some work in Chinese. So it helped to uh, help to raise the uh, concept, uh, the ideas also in our community, uh, in, in the Chinese community to, to, to try to do some work on the standardization of the data. And then we have the ICD and, uh, uh, for the COVID-19 and then the National, National Health Committee released the standard translation of the, uh, of the ICD code. 
And then uh, there are some discussion of the concepts, uh, uh, Chinese names and also the terms they're using. So um, looking back, I strongly recommend the whole community to, 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 to try to illustrate what we did then and uh, make up a plan, uh, uh, sorry, uh, organize a strategy that we can use in the future to, for the next wave or next kind of the new diseases. So, uh, so, uh, so, so as to build up a better standards at that time. But uh, uh, in conclusion, we can see that SNOMED was responding very rapidly and professionally. And it helped us a lot in, in standardization of the Chinese data, you, uh, especially after we did the um, Delphi study. So um, after that uh, time, I was sent to uh, Hubei province to a very small city called Honghu, which is 90 kilometers away from the uh, Wuhan, from the city of Wuhan. So we built up these, like the, the big data uh, infrastructure for the city to, to control the disease. So here we can see the traditional surveillance system has a lot of limitations, like the poor timeliness, the, the scalability is weak, and it, there is insufficient support to the social distancing and other uh, things. And it's especially it's disconnected with the clinical data. So in 2016, there are some new ideas after MERS and SARS about the kind of hybrid system for the disease surveillance. So we tried to use this idea to build up a new disease surveillance system for COVID-19 in, in the city of Honghu. So on the right, you can see how did we do that. We collected the uh, clinical information from nine hospitals, all of the EMRs, and we have a one uh, real-time questionnaire uh, platform on the WeChat covering all of the city residents. And we have we also connected the data with uh, the PCR lab, the antibody lab, and also the public health system. So this is a, a very uh, thorough collection of the data and then do the data processing standardization using uh, international standards, and then try to do the uh, analytics on the temporal, spatial, and also decision support and follow-up. So this is the uh, structure of home group system. And we published that on GMIR. So, um, we chose the cloud service. There are some considerations behind this because at that time there was very strict to travel control. Travel control. It was very difficult for us to buy actually hardware in a in a small city like that. So you also have to consider other things like the interoperability, the scalability, and also the functionality that you might use in the future. Because now, because at that at that time we were very poorly uh, supported about prediction of how large or how much. Uh, uh, the disease will progress. So, uh, so this is about the data collection. We provide the one-to-one -one engineering, engineer remote support because the local hospital, their IT staff uh, cannot do all of the work we are asking them to. So we provide remote support from uh, Beijing, uh, my team, to support them to build up this. Uh, 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 yeah, for the data processing, uh, we tried to build up a high standard database at the, from the beginning. So from the perspective of a medical informatician, I tried to uh, implement all of the standards uh, and also the quality control process uh, in the whole process. So, so, uh, so as to make our database not just very uh, robust in the uh, policy making uh, analytics, but also for decision support and also for the real world study, it can also be used. So uh, a very important issue I'd like to raise here is the ethics review of privacy protection and the data security. So uh, we tried our best to get the consent uh, when, we are, when we are using the patient's data and we passed the IRB in a very early phase from our hospital. So, um, and we have the independent security auditor with audit adequate, uh, adequate authority during the whole process to monitor uh, potential risks and the uh, try to correct them. So uh, these are all of the measures we've taken and it helped us to gain the support and trust from the local government and also from our uh, doctors and hospitals. So I think this is a very important issue to, uh, to, to raise here and for your consideration. So uh, we um, used the 72 hours to build up the whole uh, system for collecting data, questionnaire data from the residents. 
And uh, after several days of the promotion and management uh, uh, enhancement, we achieved a maximum uh, daily activities of over 750,000, which covered actually over 90% of the population in the city of Honghu and its daily coverage. So this is a really uh, an important system. We tried to use this to monitor the symptoms. Uh, so it's a syndromic surveillance on, uh, system on a mob mobile devices. So you can see the questionnaire very detailed, very detailed, uh, public, pu it's on a publication. And this is how did we achieve the coverage of a very high level. So uh, we coordinate, the coordination of the gov local government is very important. And also uh, you can see the residents has been very uh, uh, active uh, in, in, in working with us to, to try to improve the whole, uh, whole the surveillance uh, of the disease in the whole city. So this is kind of the trends of the symptoms. And you can see after, uh, 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 two weeks, uh, the trend is stable. So there is no big surge, uh, surging up or uh, fluctuating uh, of the uh, of the residents in the city, which is reporting fever or or coughing or new symptoms. So so this is a very strong signal for the uh, policymaker that there is no local outbreak or a large, uh, 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 I mean, large out outbreak in the communities or something. So this is a hot map of the um, a spot map of, of the uh, Honghu city. You can see we can trace back to the uh, towns and also to the communities where the people are living. So if they report uh, new symptoms, the closed the loop management will help will help the reporters to go to the uh, local uh, hospitals for for more um, uh, services. So uh, this is like. This helped us to uh, to uh, provide better service to uh, the people uh, who is not, uh, I mean, uh, diagnosed, who is in the very early phase of the symptom, of the symptoms. So um, we also tried to use the data uh, for the decision making, clinical decision support. So at that time, there was there was no like a very uh, highly validated uh, uh, data model for prediction. So we used this Lancet data model. Uh, which is actually borrowed from uh, SARS to predict the uh, uh, critical cases because there is only one ICU in the city, although there are nine hospitals. So we need to move to the uh, move the uh, critical patients earlier to the hospital with an ICU. So uh, that's why we did this risk prediction and triaging of all of the patients in the city. So this is the model we used, and um, yeah, uh, the, this kind of data collection and analytics and uh, kind of some intelligent decision support help us to enhance the full spectrum management of the COVID-19. So it's a seamless coverage of the people at different stages, like the healthy people, the exposed, the ISO, the quarantine people in under medical uh, observations, the admitted people, the critical EO people, and also the discharged ones. So we, um, this is the, uh, changing trend of the uh, 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 disease in the city. Uh, you can see when did we started the surveillance system, when did we implement the CDSS system. So, so uh, when did the medical aid team from Guangdong arrive uh, in the city? So it, it was a very um, amazing uh, work that the whole team uh, led by uh, the uh, chairman of Nantong Hospital, uh, uh, Professor uh, Zhu Hong. So uh, they, they provide a very strong support to the local city to, to, to control the disease. Um, this is some issues relevant for the migration of the uh, Hong Kong system, like the, uh, uh, the resources you need and cost effective analysis. And if you want to see it, you can uh, go to the paper. This is what we published. And then we uh, developed some new models based on the uh, EMR data we collected and structured using some SAT and other uh, standards, try to uh, develop a new model for predicting the uh, severe uh, COVID-19 diseases. So these are for, uh, for for the uh, research uh, when we are building up the system and also when we are doing the decision support us, not just for the policymakers, but also for the doctors. And after that, we tried to make this database, although the, it's very small, it's no more than uh, 400 patients, but we are trying to make it uh, more standardized and so as to support the practice-based evidence generation and help other countries and uh, other um, regions to understand the disease better. 
So um, in this area, it has been developing very fastly uh, on how do you use the international standards to coordinate different databases across, across the country. This is, a, uh, this is an article publishing on Lancet last uh, October. And you can see uh, there are a lot of uh, methodological innovation and try to uh, coordinate a very large sample of uh, our patients. It's 4.9 million hypertension patients to generate uh, a lot of new evidence for uh, real world evidence based on purely on the EMR data. So we are strictly very actively following this uh, methodology and the uh, community, it's Odyssey. So Odyssey also published their uh, methodology uh, article on Jamia two weeks ago from now. So you can see it's a very um, uh, uh, interesting uh, and also very uh, effective and useful uh, method to uh, use the EMR data to generate uh, evidence. Uh, there is a very interesting number. You can see the research questions that has been answered in one study is uh, 699,000 uh, over that, more than that. So this is, a, a, this is totally a new way of uh, using the EMR data to, to get the uh, evidence for a clinical decision. So uh, the basic idea uh, uh, behind Odyssey is that since people don't want to share their data, especially, in, uh, for example, the COVID-19, it's very sensitive. It's, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, especially the regions, region uh, governments are trying their best to control it. So uh, you, 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 it, it's kind of in, almost impossible to, to gather all of the data together. Uh, but we do need to get the insights from the EMR, so uh, from all of the cases we have been treated. So uh, uh, the, 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 the idea behind Odyssey is that you standardize all of the data inside each organization. And because you are using the same data model, like OMOP, CDM, and you are using the same vocabulary control, the most, the largest, uh, the largest part is supported by Snowman CT, and you are using the same quality control and other um, uh, common things so that you can you and also you're using the standardized and transparent ana an analytics and then uh, the, the results from each site is comparable across them in a pool, ana pool analysis. So this is the new way uh, to use uh, EMR and Odyssey has been working in the past 10 years to try to set up all of the standards and coordinating mechanisms um, uh, uh, behind the studies. Hypertension and cardiovascular disease was their uh, major focus behind, before uh, COVID-19. And then in, during COVID-19, they started a very uh, impressive work. Uh, so this is the basic idea behind how, would you, how should you use the EMR data in a new era? Uh, how, do, how can you uh, generate uh, the evidence in a large scale, trying to compare all of the different uh, drugs in the same study. So, so if you have the interest, you can go to this publication. It's it's a very uh, a new method to to uh, to do the uh, analytics based on EMR. However, uh, if you are using the databases across the countries and across institutes across the countries across the languages, uh, you need to control the vocabulary. So here is how Odyssey control the vocabulary, and you can see. There are low level concepts, higher level classifications and top level classifications and SNOMED CT is played a very essential uh, role in the, uh, uh, in the standardization for conditions, procedures, observations, devices and other like and also measurements. Of course, we have other uh, stand standards that we need to coordinate. So Odyssey vocabulary control is a very large team, but um, Snowman CT definitely is playing a, a very important role in, in this, uh, in this, uh, in the Odyssey community and also in the Odyssey vocabulary service. So uh, uh, yeah, it, uh, we have a special, on uh, Odyssey side, we have a special task force for vocabulary. And also they are now working on um, some kind of, uh, some work related to translation and localization and some synonyms work in different different languages. It's really helping, uh, uh, and uh, by using SNOMED CT, uh, 
the whole vocabulary service is really helping different countries to uh, to use their EMRs together for anal for analytics. So this is the whole uh, Odyssey vocabulary. Uh, but uh, you can see SNOMED has been the key uh, components in different uh, um, uh, dom domains. So uh, <clears throat> we are very proud that uh, because SNOMED is, uh, has been a, a mature, a highly high quality cura curated and also internationally available uh, standards, it has been um, uh, playing a very essential role in this kind of uh, 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 disease pandemic uh, when people need to get the evidence as fast as possible from uh, our practice. So, um, so uh, uh, what we did for, for COVID-19, so Odyssey coordinated a group of over 400 experts around the world. So we finished the study a thumb and which actually happened in 72 hours nonstop. So people do literature review, raise the questions, and do the data analytics, and do the standardization, and compare the results. So recently, there are many um, articles that has been published, and also uh, some are on the uh, pre preprints. So uh, I believe the, the data I shared here, the, some of them are on the preprints, but most of them has been submitted. So you can see. Informatics, especially when you are using the international standards like SOM and CT, and you coordinate different databases uh, in the world, uh, you can you can really help us to understand the disease better. For example, you can see in this uh, figure that in South Korea, US, and also in Spain, different databases are working together, trying to tell people what's the baseline comorbidities of the uh, COVID-19 in different countries. So for example, type two diabetes, obesity and malignancy are generally the top three, but their, uh, their uh, percentage is kind of very uh, variable across the different countries. So uh, this is how can we have a whole picture of the disease. And also this is the, the, uh, the result about obesity patients. I believe it has been on a preprint. So uh, you can see, uh, the informatics and especially the standardized databases across the countries, it help us to understand the sub subgroups of the patients in our uh, in the disease better. So you can see um, majorly uh, the the uh, red group, which are uh, the COVID nineteen, have higher risk compared to the blue uh, light blue uh, groups, which is influenza in the in the past season on uh, mortality and also uh, hospitalization and intensive uh, care service. In, uh, this is uh, consistent across different databases. So um, it's because SNOMED CT and other standards is standing behind the data processing and also for the analytics. So, so that different countries can use the, 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 the EMR data uh, datas to generate evidence in a very quick way and very uh, reliable way. So this is a very interesting uh, um, figure. I'd like to share with you and try to uh, ask our audience to think what happened on the battlefield. So you can see on the right, different medications are used in different countries and different databases uh, with very um, a significant variance. So how can uh, medicine in such modern time that the treatment pathway and treatment patterns, drug utilization uh, patterns are so different in different countries and different, diff different regions. So, uh, so uh, how should we be more uh, prepared in the next wave or next disease? How can we get a better um, uh, uh, evidence for our doctors to make their decision? I also put another, um, another figure here. This is the trend of uh, HCQ uh, utilization, hydrochloroquine uh, chloroquine, uh, usage in different databases. And you can see it's fluctuating according to the media, according to the uh, uh, some news on the research or according to some people's like, uh, 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 presentation on media or something. So um, 
well, informatics gave us hope for a win, but we do need to look back and think, how do we make better decisions? And how do we get the evidence faster? And how should we navigate the clinical practice in the pandemics? So um, I think this, uh, because Snowmed CT has been uh, enabling the whole country and, and the whole world to, uh, to go back and use the data we've re recorded to, to analyze what we did so, uh, so that you know, we can be better prepared for the next wave or the next disease. So uh, this has been the, all of the researches that has been done by the Odyssey uh, uh, community. And a lot of uh, you know, credits should be given to the whole society and uh, they are still very actively working now. Uh, we have a meeting uh, one hour later after uh, this. So um, we have a large paper submitted to JAMA on the pregnancy and also uh, our research on children uh, which has over 50,000, 55,000 cases uh, has been uh, reviewed by pediatrics and uh, very positive feedback. So uh, yeah, you can see these are very strong uh, evidence in different subgroups of the patients trying to help the world to understand, okay, what uh, happened and what are the real world evidence for, for our doctors to make the next steps in a clinical decision. Uh, so there are some perspectives I'd like to share with you. So this is a publication that has been published on Nature Communication communication two weeks ago. It's called The Deep Phenotyping of COVID-19. And you can see uh, the conditions uh, and also the medications uh, utilization across the different countries. Uh, and it's scattering um, uh, and it's telling you uh, what kind of uh, uh, diseases and your, uh, condition you're going to you're going to see when you are treating a patient? So uh, so we are trying to bring in the new ideas about phenotyping of a disease or phenotyping of a uh, 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 like a human condition, either it's a healthy condition or it's a, a abnormal or a, a morbid condition. So um, so. Uh, uh, by, by, by implementing the SNOMED CT in more countries and deeper in the EMR and integrated that, that with the clinical uh, practice um, uh, more closer, we are trying to uh, build up a, uh, a new era of the human phenome and phenomics. So those are the new uh, directions of the development of medical informatics and utilization of the EMR data. So for the phenome, there are many levels and you have the molecular phenome, you have the clinical phenome. Uh, and for example, we have the clinical phenotype, clinical phenome, Chinese clinical phenome and integration of the phenome and with other uh, omics data. So today we are talking about uh, SNOMED CT. So we focus more on the clinical phenome and above the microbiome, uh, uh, above the tissue level and cell level uh, so, so that we can try to get the information from uh, doctor's practice and generate new knowledge. And when we have the high quality genome and high quality phenome, and by integrating the, the new technologies of, of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, the, the bigger vision is on the knowledge discovery uh, and also the uh, um, uh, other new uh, innovation, uh, other innovation uh, on the on the um, uh, phenomics uh, and genomics uh, integrated analysis. So, um, so this is the uh, perspective of uh, how why should we uh, implementing a better standard, a more international standard, a standard that with uh, that has high quality of curation. A professional support around the world to update. So, 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 because if you don't have a, a high standard for the backbone of the phenome and, and the genome, your knowledge discovery, which relied highly on the quality of the data, will will be even more unreliable. Currently, it's uh, the machine learning has a lot of black box that people cannot understand. So we have to we need to um, to to uh, to do a better job in the standardization of the data especially the clinical phenome data. So uh, deep phenotyping is very important uh, uh, 
task right now for the clinical informatics. And um, we have a lot of standards in this era. Uh, so uh, uh, we, have, we need the standards for, uh, for the human genome on semantic data, data elements, capturing, measurement, and quality control. So SNOMED CT is mainly focused on the semantic and also uh, sometimes on the data elements or data model or relationships for the human phenome backbone. Um, uh, people are talking about HPO and SNOMED. So uh, there are some strong points for, from, for HPO. For example, uh, uh, there are a lot of tools, mature tools uh, based on HPO and for HPO, it's multi-language. Uh, no license uh, issue, but um, HPO is mainly focused on uh, genetic disease and then uh, the, the size is limited. And also uh, HPO is the known knowledge. So uh, it, uh, by generating HPO, you, loses, uh, you can lose a lot of granularity uh, for, for, uh, for the information. But back to SNOMED CT, SNOMED is uh, um, most widely used ontology around the world. It cover and mapped to multi-data domains. And also we have the sustainable support for QC and updates. So we also have profound tools cover all of the disease areas and we are multi-language. We have the multi-language. Uh, uh, however, uh, uh, the, the licensing issue is uh, restraining its use, use in China and also in some other countries. And uh, you need to learn and train. It's a very complex uh, 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 ontology. So these are the strong and weak points of SOMED CT. So, so I personally still believe that SOMED CT is the uh, better choice for, um, for, do the, uh, for the phenotyping of a disease or uh, uh, building up the human phenome or clinical phenome based on EMR data. So, um, uh, we, uh, our, our, our organization has the vision for SNOMED CT is that SNOMED CT should be the hub of the standards in the life sciences. So we talk to the standards in environment, in diseases, in signs and symptoms, in, and, in, and in genomics and biological omics. And SNOMED CT, uh, by connecting or mapping or uh, coordinating or working with all of the other uh, standards, we're trying to we are trying to set up the whole backbone for uh, the uh, the data in life sciences. Either it's going towards the human phenome, or uh, it's going towards like clinical uh, decision support, or uh, clinical informatics, or other directions of the academic research. So, my CT uh, has been the core uh, and powerful sub engine for for uh, for uh, this area for the life sciences uh, data management and and, and analytics so uh, i'd like to use the last slide to thank uh, our team members this is the picture we took when we left uh, uh, hubei province after we controlled the disease in the city so in the middle in the middle it's professor Zhu hong which is the chairman of Nathan hospital and on the uh, left of him is Professor Liu Li, which is the chief, chief of quality control department of Nanfang Hospital. So it's beautiful memory. We spent um, uh, 40 days in the city in a time that people are, I think it's so dangerous, but still though, th that was the memory for life. And um, I don't regret, uh, a, it's, it's a life memory for me. And I also thank Professor Sun Jian and also uh, Dr. Shiren Zhao and all of the residents and patients in Honghu City and uh, all, the, all of the member uh, team members of Guangdong Medical Aid Team to the city of Honghu. So I here also acknowledge the Odyssey community for uh, leading the studies on COVID-19 using the new uh, network. So this is my um, uh, information and I welcome any uh, questions, comments, and yeah, please uh, uh, send me an email if you have any uh, 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 thing that you need to discuss with me. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you again for Susi to organize this. I know this is, a, uh, you know, the, the, the trying to build up the logistics and uh, trying to make it a, a timely uh, open. And thank you, thank you again, Susi. Thank you so much, Dr. Gong. That was absolutely um, just 
enlightening. It was awesome to view and um, yeah, thank you. You also present very well, so that was nice as well. So, okay, the Q&A portion is now open. So um, attendees, you will see, um, I believe it's at the bottom of your screen or at the top of your screen, depending on your setup, you'll see a Q&A box and go ahead and enter your questions into there. Um, and I will read them out for Dr. Gong to answer. Um, you can also raise your hand and I can unmute you um, if that uh, was something that you wanted to do as well. So uh, while we have everyone generating their questions, uh, Dr. Gong, I do actually have one for you. So you provided um, strong evidence for the importance of the use of standards such as SNOMED CT in all of these various um, works. And um, you did acknowledge a number of things that Snowman International did uh, right at the very beginning when uh, COVID really started to um, show signs of becoming a pandemic, such as uh, working with a number of countries on new uh, content to be added. And then later we um, made an interim release available for everyone for the Ju July release. Um, and then we made it available in our global patient set, um, our free resource. Um, just wondering, um, are you, after looking at all of this uh, work, are there any other recommendations that you can have uh, for SNOMED International on how we can either proceed with uh, current COVID um, analyses or um, heaven forbid, if there is another sort of pandemic in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh... Thank you, thank you, Susie, for this question. I think from the perspective of a standard organization, I think Snowman International has been has done a, a, a very good job uh, in early phase and also in a continuous efforts. So uh, if you say if there's anything that we can do better, I would, I would, uh, I mean, um, uh, maybe we can do it quicker, I mean, earlier, but, you know, this is kind of the uh, thinking afterwards, you know, yeah. because at that time, you know, uh, there was no consensus in the scientific area about what the disease is, and uh, is it a new disease or something, or, so it's, it's highly relevant for our standard organization to generate a new concept or something. So, um, uh, but, uh, uh, I think what we did in Chinese uh, kind of bring some insights to uh, our Chinese community is that uh, why did we wait for other uh, international standards organizations to release something like this? Uh, we should do something before that actually. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, because uh, if you don't set up the standards at the beginning when you are generating the data, it will be very difficult. Uh, for you to do that work afterwards and it, it will bring a lot of uh, unnecessary problems when you are, when you are doing the statistics and also the uh, you have to do the mapping uh, across the institutes and something so uh, if we have any suggestion on this direction i would raise this suggestion to our chinese alumni, uh, our colleagues that next time we can uh, do a faster uh, response Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, but not just in Chinese, but anyone in yeah. their own country, you know. Of <laughs> no, of course. And yeah, um, I, I think that um, because this was the first time for us um, with regards to, you know, editorial policies and also uh, just on the release side, I mean, we had to really um, figure out like what are kind of the policy side. And so um, it was one of those things where we were just going on the fly and now it's one of those where you can at least go back and um, make some um, assessments. And so next time, yeah, I think that a lot of people are saying, you know, do it faster. And I, I think that um, how SOMED International we're moving with forward with um, more frequent releases, I think things like that will help. But yeah, when it comes to um, uh, getting global harmonization, it is one of those things where we speak with a number, not a number, we speak with all of our members on what's really gonna help everyone and try to get it from the global perspective. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I see- uh, Yeah. Uh, 
Yong has a question. Uh, yes, yeah. it's actually a really a nice point, like dealing with the multi uh, standards and ontologies. Yeah, so mm. Yong has a question. Any suggestions or tips for dealing with multiple ontologies and terminologies? Thank you, Yong. Mm. Yes, and uh, I think this is a very difficult question because, um, you know, when you are doing uh, something on the medical informatics, especially when you're working with the tech geek and uh, doctors, which are very high standard, uh, which has, who has very high standards, you always are pursuing the perfect. I mean, every, everything you need to, you want to make per, make it perfect. Like you, you, you try to maximize your uh, coverage, the coverage of the ontologies you're using. Uh, try to set up the high standards in on everything, like every uh, uh, direction of the uh, uh, data you're using. But actually uh, back to the time, I mean, when you are uh, facing the, the pandemic in the early phase, um, I don't, I think it's, you know, sometimes you just solve the problems that's most critical. I mean, step by step. Firstly, the diagnosis and standardization of the diagnosis, and then some uh, symptoms because we are we have been trying to we have to we have learned that some symptoms are uh, indicating the patient's going to be critical. So we started to standardize the symptoms and signs and things, and then um, uh, comes to the uh, the medication, and then the uh, lab tests, and then the uh, uh, imaging data. So uh, I, I think the only um, uh, the, the tips I'd like to share is that sometimes you have to, uh, I mean, uh, use a uh, low standards, uh, uh, but just uh, the basic things to solve the uh, most critical uh, requests. We have only 72 hours to set up the uh, questionnaire platform. So at the beginning, I have no time because there is only one people, it's me on the front line. My, my large team is in, was in Beijing and the local IT staff was uh, not that, um, uh, um, okay to, 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 to do those uh, uh, very difficult work. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I don't have any time to, to think about the, uh, the, uh, the EMR data side uh, because we were focused on the residents reporting uh, system on the questionnaire. But after that, uh, when the EMR were collected and tried to, the, the data analytics, uh, analytics and pr processing started, uh, we started to implement uh, uh, from the diagnosis and signs and symptoms and step-by-step -step, uh, uh, the, 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 the ontologies and standards. So um, um, I, I don't think there are any tips because uh, you know it's just uh, you need a group of people. I have 40 people, uh, but uh, to, to sometimes to do the manual curation, to do the manual processing. Uh, and sometimes after uh, some time ago, uh, after some time we started to do uh, the automatic, like the natural language processing things. But at the beginning, a lot of things are done manually. So yeah, use the people to do the uh, multi ontology thing. <laughs> Now we are in a different time because in the other countries, in the countries other than China, you have uh, many countries are having a lot of cases, uh, but um, I mean, these uh, uh, countries have uh, EMRs behind the whole uh, clinical care system. So uh, when you are generating the data, the standardization is there. So uh, I see uh, mature uh, uh, solutions for uh, combining different uh, ontologies for the standardization of the data. So it should be uh, uh, a better uh, condition now than the uh, beginning of the disease. Yeah, so th that's basically what, what I'm thinking in my mind because uh, I just wanna say um, at the beginning when you have no people, uh, when you have no other resources, manual work is kind of the only way to solve the problem you, you raised, <laughs> you, uh, the question you raised, so. Do we have any more questions from uh, the audience? Um, a couple more minutes if there are any further questions. Let me check and see if anyone's raised their hand. Oh, there is one. John Schneider, um, is there any specific emphasis on cleanup and standardization of data at source that would speed up the response of dealing with a pandemic? Mm. <clears throat> um, 
uh, I think for the uh, data processing, um, uh, you know, we, we have to figure out what you are going to use it. At the beginning, um, most of our work was focused on the triaging of the patients, because as I told you, there is only one uh, ICU in the city, but we have nine hospitals. So uh, every morning we need to find out who are going to be uh, more sick, who have the risk to be critical, and then to move them to the uh, hospital with the ICU. So, uh, so by doing the triaging, you know there are some uh, factors you need to extract from the EMR data. So that's our priority for the cleaning and also processing. So um, uh, this is the first thing I, I think we need to keep in mind is how are we going to use it? So the second is we have to focus on the basics because at the beginning and also in the, in the middle of the whole uh, battle, I, I remember the most important thing is the number of the cases. So how do you, um, uh, I mean, collect the data from different sites and then trace uh, uh, the identity of the uh, diagnosed cases, uh, trying to make sure the reporting number is right. So that's also very important for us too. So, so uh, yeah, we have to uh, focus on the basics. Uh, so that's the second thing. So, so, so when you are focusing on these kind of things, uh, it's actually uh, easy to make the decision um, on how would you clean up the data or how would you process the data. So sometimes I, I remember on the first two days, when we set up the questionnaire, uh, real-time questionnaire data platform. And we, uh, at that time, we didn't have a very powerful uh, uh, BI business intelligence platform to support the, the data visualization. So I have to have my team have a um, chart uh, and figures uh, every half hour for me to show it to the, um, to the uh, government and uh, to the uh, experts in the, in, uh, in the in the city because that was the time we are building their confidence in the technologies. So, so you know, this is uh, really uh, kind of uh, something that we uh, uh, experienced uh, in that time. So, so uh, there are many, uh, there are data incompleteness. Uh, and some uh, data are not real. You know, uh, some hospitals don't have uh, his or EMR. Some hospitals don't have PACs. So those are the problems on the front line. You need to solve case uh, step by step. Uh, it can be different across the institutes and across the countries. And also it changes with the time. But uh, the two principles should be right. I mean, um, focus on what's most important and focus on the basics. So, yeah. Thank you for your question. <laughs> And um, let's let me do one more check in the Q and A box and in the chat. Uh, not seeing any. All right. Well, if that's the case, then uh, we can wrap it up just a little early today um, and be on the lookout for uh, the announcement for next month's uh, research webinar. I'm just uh, finalizing a couple of the logistic details on that one. So if you register for the research reference group um, by emailing me, um, I can get you on that list. So you will be the first to hear about the December SNOMED CT research webinar, or you can follow our web series webpage for any of our clinical implementation or research webinars. Um, other than that, I want to thank Dr. Gong for that amazing presentation today. And uh, thank you all for attending and your stimulating questions. And until next time, thank you and have a good one. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs>